So I'm not gonna lie, Kamala pretty much just handed Trump the election. And that's, that's, that's what everybody's saying and that's what it's looking like. We're gonna check out some of the comments on this video before we get into it. If you guys are new here, welcome to the King Squad. And I hope you're having a great and prosperous day. Let's get into it. Please keep in mind, Kamala did not pick anything. Somebody said, this guy's been bought and paid for. Talking about Tim Waltz, Kamala's VP pick. And this guy says, guy let his biggest city burn for five days, including a police station. COVID mandates and closures were some of the worst in the country. 91 days left to vote these clowns out of office. Nobody ever accused Kamala of being too bright. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy, guys. So we're going to get right into this video. All right. If you guys are new here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We are doing everything in our power to get the truth out. And a simple like definitely goes a long way. Thank you to each and every single one of you guys. If no one told you today, you're the best. And I hope you're having a great day. Let's get into it. Walls. Morning to you. Already Republicans are saying this is the most extreme ticket in political history. What's your take on Tim Waltz on the undercard now? This is a stunning choice. I imagine there's a lot of cheering at Mar-a-Lago at the moment. Look, Tim Walz, he's no one to scoff at. He unseated a six-term Republican in Congress. He won a conservative district. He began as a moderate. And then he had a radical transformation as soon as he got a trifecta in Minnesota. I think it is fair to call him a progressive in sheep's clothing. When you look at his record over the last few years, what you see are transgender surgeries for minors, carbon electrical grid. See, that, that's, that's just insane. This is just wicked all the way around. Absolutely wicked. This is the stuff I'm talking about, okay? This is why we got to be careful with what we're sitting here and voting in. Oh, we're just going to vote Kamala because she's black. And then she does this. All right. See that that easy in difficult out. OK, I'm going to just vote for her because she's black. Well, it's an easy decision. Wrong. I'm going to vote for her because she's a woman. This will be the first female president. Wrong. <laughs> no, actually study who you're voting for. Like, who do you want to lead the country for the next four years? You got to think bigger. All right. This stuff is crazy. We're on the brink of world war. And then Kamala Harris is talking about, oh, I'm going to be the Democratic nominee, Bach, chicken Bach. And I'm going to just bring on this guy, Tim Waltz. And we're just going to lead the country in the, into destruction and, dis, and just the synagogue of Satan. It's just going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be bad. So let's just keep on, man. Comment down your th thoughts below of Tim Waltz. Years. What you see are transgender surgeries for minors, carbon electrical grid by 2040, uh, driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. In function, his abortion policy allows abortion until birth. These are policies that are far to the left of America. And as John McCormick at The Wall Street Journal pointed out, Kamala Harris has to do the exact opposite of what Tim Walls did. Tim Walls became more progressive. Kamala Harris is trying to become more moderate, but Republicans are going to say, you've shred, you've shed all your progressive policies, but yet you chose a progressive instead of the guy who outperformed Donald Trump and Joe Biden in Pennsylvania, and that man's name is Josh Shapiro. And that could potentially bring support um, for, from Jewish voters, something the Harris campaign needs sorely, no matter who's on the ticket with her. What do you think tipped the scales for the campaign? It is, as you mentioned, a bit of a shock choice. Um, do you think it was an ideology bent here, or do you think it was based on raw polling? So the word coming out of the Kamala Harris camp to reporters was chemistry. She wanted someone with whom she had chemistry. I would love to know what Obama said to her on the phone, because this time last cycle, four years ago, Joe Biden was having apprehensions about choosing Kamala Harris. He called Obama. He expressed these reservations to Obama per CNN, and Obama said back to him, none of that is as important as winning. So I wonder what Obama said, because if this is a chemistry choice, that's fantastic if you have chemistry. But if you don't make it to Pennsylvania Avenue in two months, the chemistry doesn't matter. So I've got to believe this was an innate decision of how she was feeling. But feelings should go out the window when you're looking at the path to 270. So Tim Waltz is 60 years old. He came to politics late in life, uh, really at the age of 42. Uh, he was a high school teacher. He was a high school football coach. He was with Dana and me on this program two weeks ago. He's affable. He's likable. Uh, he carries a smile with just about everywhere he goes. And I, I think maybe the personality characteristics here is probably what sold him with Kamala Harris. Ultimately, the question is this. You're going to spend, a, if you win, you spend a lot of time with this person. Mm -hmm. Who do you feel comfortable with? Who do you want to be around? 
I think a lot of times the person on the top of the ticket has failed that test. Yeah, I think that's right. Look, I just talked to a re former Republican congressman who said he's a nice guy. I really liked Tim Walls in Congress. He does have that folksy demeanor. I think maybe there's a belief in the Kamala Harris campaign that he could help with Western Wisconsin, which shares a media market with Minnesota, that he could help in a place like Michigan. So he's not to be dismissed, but it's just leaving a huge, wide, gaping opening for J.D. Vance and Donald Trump to expose with a progressive record when you're trying to sell yourself to independents, which, by the way, Donald Trump is still winning among independents. Joe Biden won independence by nine. Kamala has to play catch up. I yeah, because everybody's feeling this economy. And we all know Kamala is, is bought and paid for and she's a puppet. And then we got this guy, Tim Waltz, far left. OK, he is definitely a wolf in sheep's clothing. All right. And on top of that, I just want to add that uh, when they mentioned uh, Biden uh, calling Obama and asking him about uh, who should I pick for VP, that right there, he, people are creatures of habit, all right? That right there just shows you Obama's been in the scene the entire time and he's been running the show, number one. I'm going to just state that and you guys comment down below your thoughts about all that kind of stuff because we all know, we all know that Big Mike and Obama have been running this thing too and really, and but yeah. With this Tim Waltz guy, oh my gosh, we, we know Kamala's going to just continue Biden's America. And that's what that's why Trump is all the more popular. People are sick and tired out here. People do not want this. <laughs> People do not want this. People cannot afford their groceries and rents and car notes and insurance and, and groceries turned into another car note. People are out here paying three car notes a month, groceries, car note and insurance. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. And then Kamala and oh yeah, we're just gonna DEI our way through through life for the next four e four years, and we're gonna sit here and support these wars, and we're going to uh, uh, sabotage America off these policies, experimental policies. This is this is not the time for that. And honestly, I'd go as far as say that's never there's never the time for that. Okay, but that's just my thoughts. To each his own, of course. But uh, yeah, I I don't I don't get a good feeling from this guy at all. All right, but. Facts over feelings. I'm looking at this guy and, and what he's accomplished, and I, I don't I don't like him. I don't I don't. Trump JD Vance, Trump and Vance 2024. Let's go. I don't know how Tim Walls. Does so that. he had support from Bernie Sanders. He had support from Elizabeth Warren. You better. You must believe that Republicans are going to try and exploit that uh, relation, political relationship there. Back to the point about Pennsylvania. If you're a Democrat in the Electoral College, you cannot win the White House unless you win Pennsylvania and its 19 electoral votes. As for Minnesota, Republicans have not won there since 1972. That's Richard Nixon. That's 50 years. It's a blue right? state. Yeah. You chose a blue state governor. To your point, so let's say Tim Walls helps to take her over the line in Wisconsin and Michigan. Let's just say he does that. And let's say she picks up Nevada and Arizona along the way. You still don't win without Pennsylvania. Josh Shapiro outperformed Trump by three points in 2016 in Pennsylvania, outperformed Biden by three points, then went on to win the gubernatorial race in Pennsylvania by 15 points. Points. If you make a map choice, and I, I analogize Shapiro to the Glenn Youngkin choice. Glenn Youngkin, an enormously popular governor in Virginia. Maybe he could have helped to take Virginia out of the blue column. She chose not to choose the map choice. The Trump campaign chose not to choose the map choice. In their calculus, I guess VP doesn't matter. And those other traits, the chemistry, the governing does matter. Mm. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian. Yeah, it's just not looking good from Kamala, but it is looking good for Trump. Because I really do believe that she just handed Trump the election with that one. Okay. We're looking at his track record and it's just not looking good. All right. So we're going to just continue on with checking this out with another video. Let's get right into it. Presidential candidate. Kamala Harris tapping Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz says her 2024 running mate sparking strong reactions from both sides of the aisle. Let's bring in one of those Republicans that is calling her one of the most radical picks ever. Michael Watley, chairman of the Republican National Committee, joining us now. In your own words, sir, what is your reaction to her pick? I'm not surprised that she has doubled down and made this the most liberal ticket that we have ever seen, uh, that uh, she has picked uh, a dyed-in-the-wool uh, radical progressive. Uh, to join on that ticket uh, shows exactly what her priorities are and where the Democratic Party is going these days mm. uh, from open borders to soft on crime 
uh, to inflationary spending. Uh, he is going to be a very faithful partner to Kamala Harris and uh, very dangerous for this country. In an RNC yeah. statement, you said Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are two open borders, weak on crime, defund the police. Liberals who make it the most radical far left ticket in the history of our country. Walls supports illegal immigration, has called cops racist, put violent criminals back on the street. And in 2020, let rioters burn the Twin Cities while Kamala stepped in to fundraise for their bail. And Does that sound like somebody you want running our country? Not not to me. Not to me. I'm 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 just blown away. I'm. I'm thinking that this is going to push people more towards Trump because this this is not the time for all these these liberal policies, these experimental liberal policies. And and then you got all these crises. Not sure if that's entirely a word in this moment, but <laughs> uh, all these crises. How do you say that? I'm going to just say crises is temporarily for this moment. OK, so there's that all these all these de terrible situations that you don't want to be in are happening. OK, and people are in these situations and they're fed up. OK. This makes for more frustrated people, a more stressful economy. Uh, it leaves people anxious and and feeling just hopeless. Okay, and so this is this is where we say Trump is the man with the plan. This is where we say Trump. Okay, he's he's got the right. He's got his head on right, and he's ready for the job. He's de he's done it before, and we're trusting that he can do it again. And he's shown through this entire race so far that he's ready and he's willing and he he wants to do it. And yeah, so it just. And then seeing his policies and everything like that, yeah, Trump is the man for the job. Okay, if and I, and I said this before in my in my past videos, and I'm gonna say it again right now. If you care about America, this choice is easy. Okay, it's just it's just what it is. If you if you love this country, the choice is easy. Now I'm not telling anybody who to vote for, but it is what it is. Let's get back into the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go. And I'm thinking, Michael, why sugarcoat it? Just tell us what you really think. <laughs> Well, look, I think it, it really is. We're at an inflection point right now in this election cycle. We're not just going to set the direction of America for the next four years. We're going to set the direction of this country for decades to come. And it truly shows you uh, that we have two widely divergent paths. We have a ticket right now that is absolutely focused on illegal immigration. They are focused on inflationary spending and they are focused on crippling our standing in the world. Whereas Donald Trump wants to restore our southern border, he wants to restore our economy, and he wants to restore our standing in the world. There's never been uh, a, a larger gulf between the candidates, and uh, we think that the American people are going to want to choose to put America first. Okay. Um, so the reaction, as you can imagine, is... We, we definitely got to put America first as well. That's another thing with Biden and Kamala Harris that we've seen and we are disgusted by. And I'm talking about the American people, the people who actually care about this country, the people that actually clock in day and out and make this country the awesome country that it is. Um, and that or at least what it was before this this administration got in office. Um, and we're seeing that they're putting these immigrants first and everything like that. And I said this in my previous video. I'm going to say this again as well. These immigrants are living the American dream. OK, while we're sitting here slaving away and doing what we got to do to sit here and put food on the table for our families, these people are getting life handed with a silver spoon to them. And they're coming over here and they're not being vetted. They're getting all kinds of benefits and everything like that. Meanwhile, everybody else's life has only gotten harder. Everybody else's life has only gotten more stressful, OK, more tiresome. And this is where we're fed up. This is why we're saying, OK, yeah, they got to go. Trump all the way. Trump 2024. Much different from so, some on the particularly far left of the Democrat Party. AOC weighing in on Tim Walz as the pick. Uh, Vice President Harris has made an excellent decision in Waltz as her running mate. Alan Omar says congratulations to our next vice president, Tim Walz, bringing Minnesota nice to the ticket. OK, so are, is there any concern that Republicans will will champion the message that they are the right ones for the job when you've got Democrats coming together on the left and, you know, arguably Kamala Harris, who's, you know, top of the ticket, leading in the polls now. I mean, what would you say to that? How are Republicans going to brand her and this ticket? I think the fact that AOC and Ilhan Omar are very happy tells you everything you need to know about this pick. Uh, the fact that she went to the radical base of the Democratic Party in order to choose a vice presidential candidate rather than somebody who can help bring this country together. 
Donald Trump right now is the only candidate who is trying to unify America and actually talk to and represent every single American voter. Uh, they're not even making a pretense out of it. I think Tim Waltz, you can call him a wannabe West Coast guy uh, because he is trying to implement all of the San Francisco radical policies that Kamala Harris has championed in Minnesota. And it's not going to work there. It's not going to work across the country. So there's a lot of videotape out there over the years about Kamala Harris espousing her far left positions, including this piece of videotape from a forum in 2017. Listen here. We have to stay woke. Like everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay what is so funny? Like what, what is what is she laughing about? Cackling Kamala. Stay more woke than, and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. And and know that you're and and we all have to know our voice matters. And so you know, it's not just whistling in the wind. So there's a lot of other uh, video out there as well. Uh, her talking about the need to ban fracking to get rid of private health insurance. Yet the legacy media is allowing her to whitewash all of that without question. How do you and the Trump campaign combat that? Well, I think that we need to have conversations directly with the American voters. We need to make sure uh, that, that people are seeing those videos, that they're pushing it out. Uh, we need to make sure that we're able to clearly contrast where Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are coming from, as opposed to this liberal ticket. Uh, the fact that uh, we want to rein in inflationary spending, we want to unleash American energy to help bring down uh, inflation. The fact that we want a strong southern border, uh, the fact that we want America to be a leader in the world. These are the positions that American voters want. Uh, all across the heartland, all across the country. Uh, and right now you've got a ticket that is absolutely wedded to the coastal elites that wants to run this country from California, New York, and, and now Minnesota, uh, where they want to take it in a radically different uh, direction than the American people want to. All right. Uh, we appreciate you joining us, sir. It has been a big day, obviously. And there you have it. So really, really just important stuff to be paying attention to. And... This, this is what I mean where, you know, people really got to pay attention to what's actually going on out here because if you sit here and just vote based off of the surface level, oh, yeah, I'm going just, to just vote because she's always laughing. She's, she's such a happy person. I, I literally had somebody, I, I heard somebody say that, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, the fact that this person can vote is just diabolical. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I was shocked. I was blown away. I was very disappointed. But, uh yeah. Oh, yeah. Kathleen Kamal. She's always smiling. She's always happy. She's such a nice person. And I heard one of the I believe it was the McCanny lady. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her name. Uh, in the first clip, uh, she said that Tim Waltz, he's a very folksy person. So, you know, he he strikes people off his demeanor. Uh, very just uh, friendly, like a coming off as a people person. But then you know, you, you look a few layers lower. It's like, oh, shoot, wait a minute. This guy, whoa, this guy has got plans to like sabotage the entire country. Like we, uh, I saw the Titanic. I don't want that to be America. Okay. I'm just going to say that right now. So that's my thoughts about everything. You guys comment down below what you guys think. Okay. This is huge stuff. And uh, if you guys share these videos, definitely be sure to tag me so I can repost that. And I hope everybody's having a great and prosperous day, making their money legally and drinking their water. No, this is not financial advice. And you are the best. You are the bomb.com if nobody told you today. I will see you guys in the next one. Shout out to the King Squad. Subscribe. Let's go.